team is made up of individuals who operate as a unit. So every member of a basketball team has an assigned job. Like a basketball team, window system components must operate as a team. If one team member does not accomplish a job, all team members are affected. Tape drive window systems can be difficult to troubleshoot. Problems are not always obvious. To determine the causes of the problems and repair them requires knowledge in four areas. First, understand how the system works and why problems occur. This leads to an understanding of how to identify the causes of the problems. Skilled interpretation determines what is the proper service procedure. In all repairs, the challenge is to find the cause of the problem. Broken parts must always be replaced, of course, but proper repairs go one step further. They take care of what caused the problem. Just like a basketball team, the players on the CNH body's tape drive window system are also a team. But since the components and operation of power window and manual window systems are very similar, we'll concentrate on the power window system. The parts of the window system are the regulator assembly, door glass assembly, retainer channel, and glass run channel. A closer look at the regulator assembly reveals that it includes a motor, tape, regulator channel, guide block assembly, and regulator gear. Working together, these components provide the muscle to operate the window system. The regulator motor is a reversible design which uses permanent magnets. Rivets retain the motor to the regulator. The regulator gear engages both the motor and the nylon tape. The gear converts motor rotation into tape movement in much the same way that pedaling a bicycle moves a bicycle chain. The nylon tape is punched along its length with square holes. The tape is enclosed by the regulator channel and meshes with the regulator gear. Now one end of the tape clips to tabs on the regulator. The tabs on the regulator permit door glass height adjustment. Tabs on the guide and block assembly engage with the last three holes in the other end of the tape. Notice that the outside of the regulator channel also acts as a track for the guide and block assembly. The door glass assembly includes the door glass, front glass guide, rear glass guide, and sash channel. The regulator guide block engages with the sash channel. The sash channel is attached to the base of the door glass and together they transmit lifting and lowering forces from the regulator assembly to the glass. During operation the guide block slides along the sash channel transmitting force to raise and lower the window. The sash channel attaches to the door glass by one of two methods. Either adhesive or special rivets retain the glass to the sash. The vehicle build date determines which type of attachment is used. Bonded sash channels use stabilizer clips between the glass and the sash channel to prevent glass to metal contact. The clips also position the sash channel to the glass when bonding the window and sash. Riveted sash channels use a rubber insulator between the glass and sash to prevent glass to metal contact. If the glass uses a riveted sash channel, its base is drilled in two places to allow rivet installation. The door glass can be either four millimeters or five millimeters thick, depending upon application. Door glass thickness increased to five millimeters back in late 1985. The thicker glass provides improved noise insulation qualities. In either case, the glass is drilled at the front edge and upper rear corner to allow installation of the glass guide. These molded guides snap into the holes in the door glass. The front guide is larger than the rear guide. Current production glass guides use both slotted and solid attaching pin designs. Always use the latest guide design and check the part number on the glass guide.
The glass guides are captured by the retainer channel at the front of the door and the glass run channel at the rear of the door frame. Together, the retainer channel and glass run channel establish the path in which the door glass assembly travels. The glass run channel is a molded component extending around the inner edge of the door frame. A metal retainer is molded into the rear of the glass run channel. The glass run channel retainer captures the rear glass guide. The retainer channel captures the front glass guide. Two screws attach the retainer channel to the door. These two screws are loosened to permit door glass adjustment. Together, they maintain the proper orientation of the door glass. The front and rear glass guides help keep the glass parallel with the door frame. If the guides are not retained within the channels, the glass can cock, jam, or fall into the door. Okay, now let's turn our attention to identifying the causes of window system problems. On the basketball court, improper execution or timing means fewer points for the team. When this occurs, the coach must identify the problem, then remedy it. On window systems, the functional check is a good place to start identifying a problem. It pinpoints and verifies the problem. Perform the window system functional check as follows. Start the engine. Always perform the power window functional check with the engine running. The electrical system generates higher voltage with the engine running. That extra voltage operates the regulator motor with more force, causing failures which might not occur with the engine off. Cycle all windows up and down, checking for smooth, quiet operation. If the windows do not operate normally, they require inspection and service. The reference manual contains detailed descriptions of common problem conditions and probable causes of those conditions. If the regulator motor cannot be heard operating, refer to the electrical section of the service manual. In basketball, most problems relate to a few basic causes. The same is true of the window system. The window system can have a variety of problems, but they are caused by four basic conditions. Improper adjustment, binding, improper or outdated parts, and component failure. One example of improper adjustment is guide block over travel. This occurs when the guide block reaches the top of the regulator before the glass is fully up. With nothing limiting its travel, the guide block overshoots the top of the regulator and moves forward out of the sash channel. This action results in the glass falling to the bottom of the door. To correct the problem on 1985 Electra and Park Avenue vehicles, relocate the regulator. On 1986-87 Electras, Park Avenues, and LeSabres, install a regulator which includes an upstop. The know-how reference manual lists service regulators by part number and vehicle. Binding is often the cause of other problems. Any restraining force that keeps the window system from operating smoothly and easily is called a binding condition. This means that extra strain is placed on all components. Damaged channels can cause a binding condition similar to an old toolbox drawer that sticks. If the old drawer is pushed in evenly, it slides without sticking. But pushing on only one side of the drawer causes it to stick. Like a toolbox drawer, window system binding can occur in either operating direction. To check for window system binding, first remove the door trim panel, water deflector, and speaker. It's a good idea to tape the edges of the door access holes to prevent possible injury. Then, remove the regulator from the door. Reach through the access holes and slide the glass fully up and down, checking for free operation. If binding occurs, determine the cause and repair the system as necessary. Some window system problems are caused by improper parts usage. For example, the wrong type of rivet used on the sash channel often makes a clicking noise in operation. And component problems like disengagement of the glass guides 
can be the result of other system problems. So, before replacing a guide or other component, it's wise to check the entire system for possible problem conditions. You know, in basketball, every play is made up of many individual actions. It's the coach's job to correct any problems to ensure the success of the team. Successful window system repairs depend upon the proper performance of many actions, too. Let's highlight the service procedures designed to ensure proper window service operation, starting with the procedure that's performed often, door glass adjustment. To adjust the front door glass, first remove the trim panel and water deflector. With the glass fully up, loosen the two retainer channel attaching screws. Grasp the glass and move it fully up and rearward. This action ensures full engagement of the glass guide with the glass run channel. Tighten the retainer channel screws to specification. As always, check for proper operation of the system. The second part of the adjustment involves checking glass height. With the glass fully downward, the top edge of the glass should be between flush and about 3 eighths of an inch above the door belt line. If the glass is too high or too low, the regulator tape should be repositioned on the regulator retaining tabs. And the retainer channel lower screw hole must not be horizontally slotted. If the hole is slotted horizontally, the retainer channel applies a rearward force to the glass as it travels down. This force can damage or disengage the rear glass guide. To correct guide block over travel, in 1985 Electra and Park Avenue vehicles, it may be necessary to raise the location of the regulator channel. Let's review this procedure. With the door trim panel removed, drill out the regulator channel rivets. Mark a 45 degree line through the existing regulator channel rivet holes. Drill new holes about a half an inch from the existing rivet holes. Align the regulator channel mounts with the new holes and rivet the regulator channel into position. This should correct guide block over travel on 1985 Electra and Park Avenue vehicles. Now here's another procedure related to the regulator. If the upper rear portion of the regulator is located too far inboard, it can cause binding. Now to relocate the upper rear part of the regulator, drill out the top regulator to door panel attaching rivet. Allow the regulator to seek its own position. Then, use flat washers to shim out the regulator and rivet the regulator into position. Another service procedure is glass guide replacement. By the way, when you replace a glass guide, replace them both, not just one of them. To replace glass guides, first remove the door glass. Be sure to wrap tape around the guide removal tool to prevent damage to the glass. Insert the tool between the glass and guide. Carefully pry the glass and guide apart. Before installing new guides, heat them for about one minute using a hot air gun or hot water. Align the guide to the hole in the door glass. Press the guide halves together until they engage. If a guide is unusually difficult to install, Make sure the hole is properly located in the door glass. If the hole is improperly located, the door glass must be replaced. Refer to the know-how reference manual for a detailed description of door glass hole locations, as well as other service procedures. The window system team will always score well if these things are remembered. How the system works, why problems occur, how to identify causes of the problems, and what the proper service procedures are. Keeping these four things in mind will make every window system repair a three-point shot.